because if not, we will be here till next week. <laughs> Don't want to make the video too long. So I'm going to take these portions out. Of course, I can save them for a different project if I want to be crazy like that. Um, if you have double-sided adhesive, this is a good time to use it because then you can kind of peel these little pieces off like stickers if, you, if you'd like. Um, and what I'm going to do, I accidentally pulled away that little swirl. This is very delicate once you remove these little innards, if you want to call it that. So you do have to be a little bit careful. I did cut this out of 110 pound card, however, which lets you know the quality of the die set. The fact that you can use such an intricate die and cut thick paper and it doesn't damage what you see there, I think speaks of, you know, to the quality of what you're getting. So here's what I want to do before I forget. I've got my little uh, shimmer pen here. I'm going to refresh this. Okay, now I think I'm in business here. I think y'all can see me all right. Okay, I'm going to use this on these little portions, just the inside, not the edge. And of course, this isn't going to be ultra visible. However, when the light hits it, then that shimmer is going to show up. And of course, I could do some color on all of this. But I'm going to reserve the color for other portions of this make. And if I change my mind, I'll cut it again. And then do some inlay paper piecing there. So I did, I'm going to do this twice. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and color the whole thing. Not be so careful. And I'm going to squeeze my pen here off to the right a little bit. Because I want that shimmer to travel all the way to that tip but this does have a you know it is liquid and i don't want this to get all over the place so i want to be a little bit safe about it there we go now that that nib is fully covered i'm just gonna swirl this around i think i need a little bit more i may refill this a little bit with some little a little bit of water here we go now i got it Okay, so that took me a moment there, but I'm just going to swash that around, maybe repeat it over here. Okay. Hello, Susie! Merry Christmas, Susie! Thank you for being here. I always say I want to I wanna work quickly, but that's almost like an oxymoron when it comes to me. <laughs> Just wanted to take today, take it easy after everything's been said and done, right? And you're home. And I didn't purposely never ever try to make any plans for the day after Christmas. It's just not going to happen because I burn out. And I decided, you know what? I got a few things in the mail. Let me go ahead and go live, say hi to some friends. And while I have you here, in case you're the type to wait for a really good sale to get your items, whether it be the Tonic Studios, you know, one-off um, die sets, the kits, whatever it is that you like, today the vault is open. I don't know if everyone knows that. And if you're not aware or not familiar with the vault, then that's a sale that happens twice a year. Um or at the discretion of Tonic Studios, of course, where you can get whichever items they decide to put on sale at really amazing prices. And what I noticed that's unique this time around, which I think is really cool, is that they have bundled even sale prices for two kits instead of one. Bear with me, guys. I have one little piece here that wants to stay with. There we go. I needed to help that little guy to come out of there. Okay, so um, I thought that was really phenomenal because you're essentially getting two kits for the price of, oh gosh, I don't even know, one and a half? <laughs> I don't know. But I thought it was a great sale. So 
Um, so Melissa, oh wow. Hello Lourdes, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I don't think I want to use this thin one. I just got to thinking, I think I want my regular normal tip here. Um, yes, if you're brand new to Tonic Studios, the vault is the best introduction ever because you can essentially get a kit for the price of the papers. And so if you if you haven't seen my pr uh, prior videos, when you do get a kit, you're getting uh, exclusive dies and stamps that you're not going to see anywhere else. They will not be re-released or anything like that. And then you're also getting a sampler of Nuvo papers, Nuvo sprays or inks or pens, you name it. And guys, when I tell you, you get your your uh, your money's worth even at the regular price. Um, because if you didn't see my last video, I'm trying to think of which kit was the last one. I want to say the last one was the Bobbles. The one that everyone went crazy over. <laughs> However, the one before that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Melissa, I don't know. I, I lose track because we work, of course, ahead of time, right? Um, but in any case, the one with, the, with the, the boots and bouquets, or the boot and bouquets, that one had 10 Nouveau markers in it. And that was included in the price of the kit, which blew my mind because I'm like, nobody does that. Who does that? <laughs> But Tonic Studios does, and so you can get introduced to an entire range of product at a really great price. Now, this is what I do, guys. I take my little paper towel if I get a little bit too much adhesive. Because that's shiny paper, it's going to wipe right off. Okay, so no harm, no foul. Super easy. And then I have one more to layer here, and we're good with these little pieces. Um... But yeah, there's also from the Stamp Club, which by the way, the Stamp Club is no longer going to be a thing um, with Tonic Studios. So if there were any Stamp Club items that you really loved, now would be a good time to go ahead and grab those. Because some of the items I saw were as low as $9.99, which is insane. Um... And that, you know, that was probably like a designer's choice item or something like that. But still, as I said before, you can really stretch these items to make quite a, a variety of different um, types of projects. So just because it's a 3D box, for instance, it doesn't mean you have to ever make a box. If you don't like boxes, don't make one. <laughs> but you can make cards, you can make backgrounds, you can make tags, you can make ATCs. I mean, you name it. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So, okay, so we've got this little guy going here. And so, of course, if I'm going to do like a Valentine theme little rocking horse, I could focus on the heart aspect of this make, which would be super cute. But again, I'm going to try to keep this part simple for now, and then if I change my mind, I'll do the inlay off camera because I'm not going to torture you guys with that. It takes, it takes some time to do. I'm not going to say that it's difficult because it's literally just adding a glue to the background and then putting little pieces of paper on top, but it is time consuming, so I have to be realistic about that. So here's my second little panel here, and if it gets a little messy, I'll go back with like a little baby wipe, take off some of that adhesive, but I try not to enter panic mode <laughs> because there's always a fix. And then this one, okay, no, this one has to flip this way before I forget because they're facing two different directions, so I'm glad that I just caught that. This is actually the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment, let it dry, clean off this. But I'm saving my little hearts because I think I might color those and put them back in there. So I got one, two, and I should have one more. Come out, come out wherever you are. If not, I'll cut it again. Oh, it's on the side. Okay, found it. 
Okay, moving on. Now, okay, so, uh, oh, thank you, thank you. So you, uh, I should have trimmed this down so to not lose the pin dot detail on the hollow paper. Oh, that was a good idea. You know what? And I know uh, what Melissa's referring to was to trim down the, the little edges now, if I did that, I just want to show you, it would have left me a super thin edge here. It's, and I'm not going to say you can't because it's doable, but it would have taken me a, a lot longer to adhere onto that surface. Um, so that's one of those uh, not live video things <laughs> I'd be happy to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, because this is going to take me a minute to dry, is I'm going to grab these little pieces that cut out and I am going to add a bit of Nouveau Mousse to these. This is the mane of the little horse and I'm going to refer to the picture here for a moment because it does, oh I see, okay there's that little portion there. I was trying to figure out what's that little itty bitty piece for. Not blue people. <laughs> okay. It's for the little, his little head. All right. So what I'm going to do is grab a little brush. I happen to have these smaller ones. And I'm going to make sure I had just clean, clean them today. It's still a bit wet, but that's okay. And I'm going to grab this color here. I happen to like it. And it's called, um, what's it called? Uh, sea Spray Green. And I just think it's such a gorgeous color. It's very elegant. I'm going to grab that and color this. And this is going to make what's embossed on this paper also pop. And if you want to go with a really rustic look, you could even use one of the expanding mousses from Tonic Studios and apply some heat and let it get all bubbly bubbly bubble d <laughs> bubbly <laughs> y'all know what i meant all right so you can transform a plain old white piece of paper into this very lush gorgeous um pearlescent textured whatever you want right it depends on the mousse you're using it depends on the quantity um, because I'm applying this very thin, very thin layer with a tiny brush, but you can go in with a spatula. It all depends on what you like. And then I'm going to repeat that on the tail of two of these. Okay. So what I'm going to do... And I'm going to snip these little tails right off because it does not come with an extra tail die, just as a heads up. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that right off. I want myself to have a little horsey whose tail matches. And you're noticing I have two different die cuts, and that's of course because this is directional. And this also has some uh, embossing on it. So you don't have to use two separate dies for that. The die does it all on its own, which is really great. Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry. And this, by the way, is a medium matte. It goes with the background here. This is from, um, you know, you can get it from Tonic. I think it was designed by Tim Holtz, if I'm not mistaken. I can take it off of the carrier sheet. I just tend to leave it on there because then I can just do this and pick it up and move it aside. So Melissa's asking which blending brushes I use. Oh, so those little ones, you can get either you, you can get them in several places i do have a link to scrapbook.com where you can pick them up they have them uh, i want to say there's some brand i can't remember if it was waffle flower 
they sell them or you can definitely check on Amazon and see if you find them there whichever price is better for you I'd probably look on Amazon first to be honest you know um, and I think I just got <laughs> new mousse on my forehead nothing new okay so I'm gonna set that aside in a second now let's look at the rest of this because there are you know the little opposite facing little pieces here which I think I'm so tempted to keep adding shine to this I was thinking about this pen because I chose holographic paper I was thinking just the edge would be fun to just go ahead and add a tiny little bit of shimmer to just the edge and the same here okay and on here there's the rocking bottom portion right it's solid but it does have some little details there that pop out so i'm gonna go ahead and do that one of them is the, that tiny little um heart it's so pretty pop these guys out i only wish i had gotten this before christmas because it would have been so cute to use it as a little gift box but of course to decorate the tree which is my intention is to just go ahead and put it on the tree <laughs> um but i'm gonna pop these out and then i'm gonna show you what i'm gonna do with the other portion because uh remember the little horsey i cut off his little tail right so that i can decorate this base but I'm going to repeat that with the bottom portion. I should have done it all at once. Let's do this guy down here. So that way I have... Let's set these aside a second. Yes, the, as far as the brushes, and I'm answering uh, what Melissa's comment is regarding the brushes. I like you know depending on what the job is right if I, if it's something that's a small detail i want that brush um the bristles to be compact and small now tonic studios does have that um kind of collection of brushes that are graduated i don't have those i have this size which i also have you know bunches of right because you can get these rather easily and then you can have them for color collections or however you want to use them because they clean really easy. In fact, I saw Lou from uh, Craft Stash. Someone showed her that she put them in one of those um, laundry bags that we get for our delicates and tossed it in the wash. And she was able to wash all of her brushes. But I also like this size. And this is also from Tonic. And these are great to do the big pieces of paper in fact i showed this in a video and i'm trying to remember what i was making oh it was the um the apothecary box kit um i did an entire panel of paper with mousse and it was oh my gosh first of all it was so much fun <laughs> but just the fact that that entire piece of paper can be colored like that is super cool so um case in point See, but these are so wet because I just cleaned them. So I'm going to grab a dry one. And I'm going to go back with that same color. I just want to keep it kind of, tend to do that. Keep it monochromatic if I can. And then load the brush. Because then you can use the portion that you want. And boy, does that change. Now this is wet still. So it's getting lighter. So let me find a, a dry one that makes a difference. This one's dry. And I shouldn't have used the wet one because it does introduce water into this, but it happens. So it's quite a difference on, on how it even loads when the brush is dry. So 
so just to prove my point do you see how much more I hope you saw that how much more solid it looks when you use a dry brush which and that's because it's a water-based product of course but it's it, it's in seconds that you can get that result and I mean look at the the color payoff on that is amazing and if you want to do um, say you raise horses and you have like a modeled horse um, or you know someone who has a particular horse and you can do a stencil and create the same kind of look on the horse I mean you can get you don't have to do cutesy all the time you know it's a lot you can do with this so I went with a second coating on that because I did want that intensity of color and I just love that green I think it's so gorgeous um, a salad spinner <laughs> yeah these are these are pliable i think they're all made by the same company you know this says new on it but you know gotta tell the truth on this channel <laughs> um they're quite pliable oopsie i forgot this had the carrier sheet on it don't want to make a mess okay i send things flying all over the place all right i'm gonna try to be neat so I'm going to do the same thing here, just cut away what I don't need, and I am going to try to aim my scissors so that it follows that same curvature of the paper, because die cutting does offer a really nice beveled edge, but you lose that when you cut it with scissors. So I do want to be careful there, but easy peasy, right? And I can cut away a tiny bit more if I'm not happy with it. There you go. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And here. So these are going to layer on top of the other one. So I'm done with this little guy. Don't need him anymore. I'm going to come back to this. And... I did get a little bit of something on there. I'm going to take my rubber eraser. Let me just spill a drink for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to layer this here. And I forgot to take these out, guys, because I was just cutting all of this. But I do like that effect. Okay, here we go. One more. Take all these little things out. Now, if you want to, of course, it goes without saying, you can have the different color paper behind this for contrast. But you could just as easily sandwich these and have like a piece of vellum behind there. And then use your drops to decorate that little um space there that's up to you so i'm just gonna go ahead and lay this down and it's still a little bit humid so it might not be entirely flat but we're just gonna go with it okay <laughs> yeah there's no such thing as neatness when you're crafting oh my gosh today i came in here to clean up after it, it looked like a hurricane had hit this room i was like whoa i can't i can't start a project unless i can see my you know my entire table i'm just a little i don't know ocd about that but it just feels like i can breathe better if the whole background is cleaned up but to me i have to be a little bit ruthless about it and just throw out as much as possible because if not you know, I'll become like super indecisive of, should I keep it? Should I let it go? What? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Do I need to have this next, you know, winter, whatever? So I've learned to tell myself, girlfriend, let it go. Just let it go and start over next time. And I mean, I try to keep um, scrap papers by color family. 
depending on what they are so as to not to be too wasteful but you can't keep everything it's just you know not possible okay so we have these little guys I'm loving the start already and before I go on to the back layer or anything like that what I want to do now is I want to look at you know decorating this as much as possible before I make it into a 3d project and I did cut these little guys out I had cut them out the top layer in hollow but then I changed my mind you know how that goes so I think I'm gonna do the white on hollow or I can definitely change the color of that and then I have it over here as well because that's gonna be my kind of metallic I have the little poinsettias as you can see I have the little saddles. Wait, this goes here. Okay. One and two. Hello, Mandy. Hi, thank you for being here. So, um, Mandy was mentioning before that she's, she's new to tonic this year, if I'm not mistaken. Just recent recently come to uh, into the tonic family <laughs> so the trouble has just begun <laughs> and uh, so that's exciting because I can remember you know exactly when I started watching them and um, it's been fun okay so I have to I'm not a horse uh, riding person <laughs> So I have to really think about this one. And I know that this goes on the little face here. So thankfully they've done all the thinking for me. Okay, thank God. And this one goes here. I'm such a visual person that I have to see the reference of that. Cause if not, if you handed me that little piece of paper, I'd be like, what, <laughs> where, how? <laughs> okay, and then of course, we cannot forget that beautiful mane. So this is where you have to decide, okay, who's on first, right? Which is going to go first. And I think it's rather obvious that this has to go last. So I'm going to move those aside for a moment. Well, we do their hair. <laughs> and there's that little wisp little piece for the front so I think I'm gonna start there so that I don't uh, lose those guys did I already lose the other one <laughs> probably did nope it's right here okay I got it so in this case I am going to place the adhesive here first and I have to take a look at this piece of paper. It turns out that it's almost like a little curl. And there is a tiny piece that sticks out here. Let me show you guys what I mean. So whenever I see that on the edge, the camera's here, okay. So whenever I see that on the edge, I try to let myself be guided by that. So that way I'm not guessing too much. And it fits right there, so. I'm going to repeat that on the other side here. And now, mind you, you don't have to be so scientific about this. You put it wherever you want. <laughs> but it's just something that I, fig I figure if I see it and notice it, then I should point it out when, you know, doing this. I'm going to put some there. I don't think I need to go too crazy with that. But this is going to go underneath the ear and it kind of overlaps i think over here so just want to make sure that i have it correct here so i'm going to add a little bit more down here where all those little curls are this hair has got some or this horse i'm sorry what am i saying has some really nice hair <laughs> and that can kind of compensate for the fact that it doesn't have the other little ear. I think that's what's throwing me off a little bit there. Okay, so it's going to go right there. I need to clean my hands. Um, so, oh, you're very welcome, Mandy. 
<laughs> seventh time today. <laughs> it happens. It happens. I know you're not alone in that, so I find no, you know, I will not be critiquing you. <laughs> because it happens. Sometimes you're like, and that one, and that one. <laughs> but I do have to say, I mean, to enjoy it, you don't have to have it all. You know, I don't want to come off as a hypocrite, but you really, you know, you don't. You can have one set here and one set there and still enjoy it thoroughly. Um, but it is, you know... <laughs> Quite tempting that when you see something that used to be forty dollars go down to ten dollars or fifteen or whatever, you're like, mm, well, <laughs> if they insist. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come over here, and you guys have seen I've not used a ton of adhesive on this. You really don't have to, and I'm gonna make sure that these look similar. And again, I'm trying to I'm trying to picture an ear <laughs> on this horse. Okay, I think it goes there. We're just gonna put it there. All right, I think I'm gonna be happy with that. And now, what's kind of interesting about this is that the little saddle curve fits right behind where the little um. The horse's mane is so that's kind of another indic indicator that you've done it right which I think is kind of neat so we're gonna do that one there and just following the curve of its little back hello Miss Beverly <laughs> yeah it happens quite quickly it's like an avalanche you just, all you have to do is kind of just, you know, brace yourself and move forward. <laughs> and just know that everyone else is right along with you. Just picture that in your head, you know. <laughs> You're not alone. But I do encourage people, I go, you know what, just budget, budget, budget as much as you possibly can. Just budget out what, you know, what you really use. Um... I've said that before on this channel, you know, I'm, I'm that girl that learned how to do her own hair, learned how to do her own nails, doesn't do a whole lot of makeup or anything like that. So, whereas other people spend money on that sort of thing, I spend money on, <laughs> on paper and glue. So, hey, you know, to each his own. Um, and this is now going to be able to fit right on here and it is the suggestion of course of a little bridle so one more time if it's not absolutely perfect that's okay i'm going to avail myself of yet another tool here and that's just because it makes my life easier and that's the little tweezers to hold the paper and you guys probably already all know about the fact that you can get the little thinner nib here of um, for the glue that's a saving grace right there it makes the glue last forever in a day and it does make life easier so that you can apply these things so I'm aiming here for the little face just trying to be neat about it and also being careful that it lands kind of down here so I'm gonna kind of hold it there and then be patient as I apply the rest. I'm gonna hold it there for a moment in here and then I'm gonna check the chat real quick. Exactly, yeah. Oh, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> thank you so much. Not at one day. Oh, no worries, Mandy. okay yes and i'm i'm with you honey my my first language is also not english <laughs> kind of learned two at, at two at, a, at the same time so sometimes i have conversations and i can't even finish that i think that happened to me yesterday especially when i'm really tired 
I'm like, I can't even finish this in English. It takes too much effort. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to repeat this here. Now I know that I don't need adhesive on this entire part. Just up here. And then that little curved portion that goes on the face. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. Try to aim... Here, I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to let it go this time around. I think I need the tweezers. Okay. Now I'm using white paper and I will warn you that adhesive will oxidize. So if you're using white paper, you do have to be a little more careful because it, it can get messy. I am going to practice forgiveness for having been messy with my glue and move on because girlfriend you can always add glitter <laughs> always you can always add glitter and act like you meant that okay now I know there are little eyes somewhere on this table and I think I found one they are itty bitty let me tell you tiny okay and thank God, horses only have two eyes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, apply the eyes before I move on. And that's, again, personal preference. Where do you think your horse should be looking? <laughs> I'm going to aim for here and here. Kind of helps to have them face one another. So you can look at each other as you're putting their eyes on. Where's the other? I keep losing them, guys. They're so tiny. I know I had both two seconds ago, and now I can only see one. What did I just do? Okay. Thankfully, I cut them out more than once, because I know that I'm notorious for losing tiny pieces of paper. Okay, so we're going to do this before I lose them again. And I did cut these out of this kind of uh, metallic green paper, because I thought it would match the the mane of the horse horse's mane however you say that the hair okay so close enough in my book i found that other one. <laughs> oh, mandy um yeah no 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 my my um well see i learned it at an early age but I grew up in a household where only Spanish was spoken. So um, most people don't notice until I say uh, certain words. But it took me some years to be able to, I mean, still to this day, there are words that I'm just like, you know what? I don't think I want to say that because it's not going to sound right. <laughs> but I think that happens to everyone, you know? All right, there's these little guys, and I know I had another one. Oh, mama me, I know that I had the little bitty, um, I don't know what that's called, stirrup? The stirrup? The little foot part there? I think I have managed to misplace the second one. I probably threw it out thinking that it was a spare piece. So I'm going to omit the green one because I don't know where the other one is so later on I'll go back and add it um, but we've got th those portions and then there are the actual uh, decorative portion of the saddle and what I thought to do there was that I can leave it like that which is this is a really pretty textured paper I think I might just do that and then add the um, the shine to the little um, the poinsettias instead. So I'm going to go with this. Okay. And when I'm adhering onto shiny paper, because there's this is a slick surface, then I try not to move the paper too much. I try to just press onto it rather than, you know, rub it in. <laughs> So these are also directional, but that little curve fits perfectly there. Okay, little press. 
those are good to go and then I, as I had mentioned before I have these little ovals and then this little portion with the heart which I thought I had two so let's just call this front and back because it turns out I don't have two now on here I do want to I think I want to color the edge of it I have a dual dot marker here and what I'm going to do is, so that I don't ruin it, I had actually cut it out twice. Let me see. I'm just going to kind of stagger this and use it as a template. So I'm just going to color around the edge there. And of course, I've got this, you know, backwards so that I don't ruin that piece of paper. So I can use it on a card. And I'm going to just kind of complete it here loosely. All right. On the edges there. And of course, I can still use the paper. Now, this does have a thin nib if you're more comfortable with that. Okay. So now I'm going to layer this. I feel like it, it's going to help it stand out a tiny bit more. And it's still wet, so it's not exactly, you know, going to stay in place if I keep touching it. So I'm just going to try to be careful there. This one's going to be considered the back for, for the time being. Okay, now, um, oh, thank you so much. I take that as a huge, huge um, blessing. <laughs> so I very much appreciate it. Now, while these little guys are drying for a moment, I'm going to address these little pieces, which you can cut out using one of the dies. And it looks like this it has these little tabs on the side and then a bunch of little fold lines. All you have to do is go ahead and burnish every single fold line. And then on the one that has the diagonal uh, edges there, that's where you want to apply your adhesive. And that's going to fold. And you're going to press that solid portion, just fold it over and press right onto it. And it's going to look like a little straw. And in fact, if you happen to have straws, because they sell such pretty ones now that are striped or polka dot, shiny, then go ahead and cut a straw to the same length and you'll be able to use one for this project if you'd like to. I did that for um, the Ferris wheel and I really love the results. I thought it was so cute. So there's always a different option. These little pieces on the end would just glue right on top of each other. So I'm just gonna fold one in, cover it with the opposite side. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Fold it in. And this will let you know if your little straw is wonky. <laughs> but of course, you're just going to achieve this. And you want this to be nice and flat because that's going to help you adhere your little rocking horse together. Okay. Now we can come back to this and I'm going to take a look at the instructions here because I didn't look earlier, I don't think. I want to say the solid portion goes to the front. Yep, it does. Okay, so we are meant to place this with the solid portion to the front because it's larger and then the 
shorter portion to the back of the horse. Now before we do that, we want the back of this to look really nice and pretty. So, um, so Mandy's asking if I'm using the tangerine. I do not own one, Mandy, for the simple reason that I didn't even know it existed when I was you know, um, initially crafting with paper. So I discovered the, the tangerine only a couple of years ago, which, which was when I discovered Tonic Studios. Well, I should, I should say four years ago or something like that. And by then I was very well equipped with, <laughs> with enough machines. Um, and I have very uh, delicate hands, so I actually have to use an electronic one because of the quantity of die cutting that I do. So I own an, uh, an Anna Griffin Empress to answer your question, but I do have manual machines as well. I just don't happen to have that one. In fact, I think it was sold out when I first uh, learned about Tonic Studios. So, I, I mean, I've never had the uh, justification to go ahead and pick one up because of the fact that I own others. But if they ever, you know, kick the bucket, then I might pick one up just to see. I've heard it's super powerful. So maybe you don't have to crank that handle as much as I had to with mine. But I'm, you know, I'm not displeased with the ones that I have either. I just found myself having a lot of hand pain. Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I'm not happy with the back side of that mane. I should have cut another piece. But we're going to, you know, just go with it. This is going to make this really nice and sturdy. My cat has entered the room. <laughs> She's yelling at me. But she doesn't know Mama's crafting. All right, let's go with this one. I'm going to cover this up before it dries out. There we go. I know that um, several of the girls on the design team do own the tangerine and they can be, you know, quite honest about how, the, you know, their use of it is. And I know that Vicky, who's one of the people who does the most projects for Tonic, um, she owns it and she raves about it. She says it's her favorite. She's had it for years. Never had an issue with it. And I know Jody also, you know, you guys all know who Jody Johnson is. She loves it. So, um, I would say if, if you're looking for a new machine, I know that in a couple of weeks it should be out for purchase. And if you want to give it a try, the best thing about Tonic Studios is that if you don't love a product, they'll take it back. No, no issues. Oh, there you go. See, so um, Lourdes is saying that she still has the same plates from 2019. So I don't want to deviate from the subject at hand. However, let me show you something really quick, okay? Because it's right behind me. These are the magnetic plates that I have from the Anna Griffin Empress. And I was, in fact, I was just telling my husband, I think I need to replace my magnet. Not because it doesn't work, but because it stretches. And so the side starts getting chewed up, but I, what I do is I take my scissors and I cut it off. But this does not warp. And that's what I like about this machine. Now there is a, that shim there that you can take out if you want to, but this holds my dies in place. So I really like that. And you see how long it is. I can fit a ton of stuff there all at once. And the machine has a low profile, so it doesn't take the thicker dies. But quite honestly, ever since I got it, I, I've maybe used the thicker dies a handful of times anyway. So that's just, you know, how it goes. Oh, you're welcome. That's what we're all here for. So that's what's wonderful about the, the live, you know, videos is that you can ask. And yeah, I say ask away because why, why not, right? <laughs> you need to know before you spend your money on items. What's the best thing out there? Now I have the, um, what are they called? Oh my gosh, I'm looking right at it. <laughs> it 
Spellbinders Platinum. So I have what I call the mama, the big mama drama, and I have the baby. And they both work wonderful. Um, however, for me, it did hurt my hands to try to, you know, crank that handle. Okay, so here, this is all up to you how you want to place this, right? I think I want to start with the middle here because I want to bring this all the way down here. Actually, I'm going to kind of guesstimate. Yep, I'm going to bring it down there. Okay. I'm going to apply my pressure. Can move it. Uh, I would say to try to center it as much as you can, actually. And I want to show you guys something also. And that this is for the nitpicky crafter, right? <laughs> the little heart in the middle on mine is going to face the back of the horse. If that's an issue for you, then make sure both of your hearts face the the other end <laughs> if you don't care then you know it's no big deal now what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply pressure here listen there's no science to this this is just you know you place it where you know it fits and then apply the next bit here i'm going to make sure that it's at a slant because i do want it to look like a sleigh so i'm aiming you know using that horse's neck as my guide there and then i'm gonna do this one straight up and down i know i'm mo i'm moving this all over the place but that's you know realistically how we all craft so i'm gonna make sure that this is straight up and down And that's quite close to the little horse's bum, but that's okay. It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> okay, so that little portion is there. Now, remember the little straws we made? That's what I'm calling them. I don't know if the instructions say where to place these. No. So what I'm saying, actually, I take that back. What I'm seeing is that they have one in the center and I only cut out two. So cut out three. <laughs> I did an oopsie. I only, I only cut out two. But you can place them, yep, here and here. Okay. And don't do as I say, or, you know, don't do as I do, do as I say, <laughs> or whatever, however you say that. And then you're going to need the one in the center, all right? I'm not going to keep you guys though, so I'm just going to go ahead and place these here. And you might need a touch of hot glue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and supplement that. And make sure this is nice and square. Do the same thing on the other one. Nice and square, just so it looks neat. Okay. And then I'm going to place my little partner here, right on top. So you may want to start with the top portion, or you may want to start with the bottom portion. It's whichever one you're mo most comfortable with. I think that I want to start with the bottom portion because I can always move this up and down a little bit. So I'm going to add a little drop here. I don't know if this is the smartest way to go about this, but I'm going to pretend that I'm adding it to the back first and to the center. And then... I'm going to apply pressure there. We live and we learn, right? 
And I'm going to go ahead and apply my adhesive here. I'm going to be a little bit ambitious and do the whole thing. Flip it over. And better able to see the, the back of the horse this way. Now I meant to mention that you can line the inside of this, of course, and it's up to you when you do that. Oh, it's so cute. I haven't even finished it, but I'm already loving it. So I had cut out these little pieces in a light blue only because I, I wanted a little bit of contrast. So before I forget, I'm going to quickly put these on here. So you may want to do this before you start the assembly, just because it'll be easier to apply pressure. I'm just going to quickly put those in there. The second one is going to go here. And then, of course, if you really love the pattern, you can repeat it on the inside. one more back here okay and now I'm gonna finish this little guy back here now I don't think I'm gonna have an issue with this not having that centerpiece although I, I do intend to add it off camera because what I want to do is put this on my Christmas tree but now you can have all the fun decorating there uh, I think I mentioned earlier there's the little bows that you can add to the little horse if you want to there's the poinsettias there's the greenery um, which I had cut out in the holographic paper so I think it'll look pretty with a whole lot of this, right? You add as much as you like. And there are two different kinds here. I like to kind of plan it out first and I'm my paper is flying on me because I have the little cobwebs from the hot glue. Okay, they're hard for me to see, but I know they're there, okay. Um, and I tend to cut these out in several colors or in white paper because it, I want to get an idea of how it's going to look. And if I decide, well, you know, I want to add some mousse or whatever, then I like to have them in the plain card. Um, and that's just a little something I like to do. So here I had cut those out in red. Um, oh, I forgot the tail, guys. No one told me. I forgot the tail. <laughs> My little tail that I needed to match up here. Okay, this is going to go here. I was like, why is this horse looking so pale? <laughs> you need a, his little tail there. Okay, now it looks a little bit better, right? I'm thinking... Yeah, I think I'm going to add the greenery kind of on the leg. Thank you so much. It's fun. You see, it's not, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. <laughs> it can just be fun. And I do switch back and forth. I, I'm sure you guys are noticing. I switch back and forth between the type of, you know, glue tip and the type of adhesive and all that. But... My opinion on that is if you have it, use it. If you don't, then just use whatever you have on hand. Because there's no, you're not breaking any rules by not having everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that here. Okay. And on the little red poinsettia, I'm trying to wipe off my little mat here really quick. 
Okay. Not entirely clean, but that's okay. I'm going to take some glacier paste and add a little dab of that onto that red paper. Just a tiny amount. Don't need a whole lot. And make those poinsettia shiny because there's a bit of silver on this paste and I thought that would look pretty with the contrast of the um, the holographic paper. Okay, so I'm just dabbing that. And I'm going to do it with the smaller ones as well. Okay. And that's like adding jelly to a sandwich. <laughs> as much or as little as you like. Uh, the little bows can have that whatever residues on that little brush because I don't want to have to wait for it to dry too much. <laughs> Trying to speed it up a tiny bit. That's just a little hint of silver there. Okay. I don't want to have a red horse, however, so I'm going to take a moment here to dry or uh, wipe down my fingertips here. Oh, wonderful. Mandy, yes. I'm right there with you. If there's a product that I think, um, you know, kind of delivers as it promises to that, uh, that I can say, yeah, you know, um, a little bit goes a long way and it, it really does work. It would be the, definitely the deluxe adhesive for sure. And, um, and that's not because I'm, you know, trying to push a product or anything like that. It's just the darn truth. <laughs> it works. Don't need a whole lot of it. It doesn't like run down your project. I've had that happen in the past where it's so, the you know, the adhesive is so watery that then it ruins the project. And it dries clear. So, you know, what else do you want? <laughs> What more? What more could you say? All right, I think I'm going to be a little bit careful with how much of that um, greenery I put on there. So here I'm going to be careful not to touch that flower because I don't want to get that, um, that paste on my fingers because it's still wet, you know, kind of going a little bit faster than I normally would. And I have the option of doing the white on top of that red. I am going to add that shimmer as I had done before. If I can find my pen, it's right here in front of me. Okay, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And do another one. Because I said I'm going to pretend that this is the front of the horse. Because if I put this on a tree... It's truly not going to be visible from the other side, not much. And I'm going to do the smaller ones. It also gives me a little bit of an excuse to do more dimensional flowers on one side for the sake of this video. So I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to put a little drop of adhesive here. As you can tell, I'm not using a whole lot. That one's going to go right there. I'm going to now go in with the white and I'm going to stagger these. I'm going to pull on it as I place it on there so that I get a little bit of dimension. Now this paper is technically wet because I just added that, you know, shimmer. So it will dry in position there which is really awesome. And you can make these poinsettias super tattered if you like that, you know, if you're, you're going for a more shabby look, you can definitely shape these a whole lot more. 
And if you like flower videos, I'm going to be doing a series 2024. I just did a, a video that released Christmas Eve just to give you guys kind of a heads up. And I made the little star box and then I put flowers on top of it just to show you guys kind of what to anticipate. Because I really want to, you know, just explore that topic. Have some fun with it. Why not? I think I'm going to make this a little girly, girly horse. She's going to have a bow right there in her hair. Okay, so there's going to be that going on. I'm going to reserve this for the other side. So I'm not going to decorate the other side at this moment. But, you know, it's going to be more of the same. I don't want to keep you guys here too much. But there's the Nouveau Glitter Accents. You can get in different colors as well. This is a thicker drop. And I'm going to show you guys, you know, just for the sake of argument. See that? It's really thick. You don't have to apply it directly from the bottle if you don't want to. You can do as I had done the uh, the paste and just pick up a brush. Okay. And if you want to, you can just kind of stipple it on your project here and there. Whatever you like. I'm going to do it on this second bow here. And what I would call this is kind of like controlled glitter because I know a lot of people say I hate glitter. I know what it's referred to in the crafty world. I'm not going to repeat that, but <laughs> Oh, thank you. I'm going to uh I'm going to show it in a moment. Um <laughs> But as far as this is concerned, it's like you can add it to a project and Make it so that it's, you know, only placed where you want it, of course, you know. So I'm going to try to pull that up too, because again, any water-based project is essentially adding water to your paper. So take advantage of that if you want to. And then that way you can add a little glimmer here and there. Oh my gosh, I think it's so stinking cute. Now, I do have a little oopsie of adhesive there. I'm going to wait until this is entirely dry and what you can do if that happens is that you can take an eraser if you're not familiar or new to crafting I always say the ugliest tool in your stash should be a rubber eraser and if not you can get a mechanical pencil I would not use a pink eraser, however. I'm going to say no, don't use that. Make sure it's a white eraser. I happen to have a few here, but here's another one where the rubber is actually white. If you're using white paper, of course, you know. And then you can go in and just rub that off, and it's going to take the adhesive right off, and you don't have to worry about it. It's going to look really neat. Like, you made no mistakes. <laughs> um... So I'm going to leave those off to the side for a moment. Let me grab that little box so you guys can see those flowers real quick. But I'm really happy with this. And of course you can add the little drops in the center, right? So let me do that really fast. I'm going to go ahead and grab... Oh, don't make choices, but... Oh my god. Go ahead. I mean, I could do an olive green, but... I'm going to go with the white in the center here. Okay. Now normally I would say make sure you press this off to the side. Okay, I'm just going to do a little white drop there in the center. So darling. Now remember what I said before, this can be completely solid down here at the bottom, right? Now on my other side, the red paper actually fell out. <laughs> So you have the option there of, you know, being able to see right through it. So, of course, you know, you can start here. Now, I do have to put my little tail. I'm not going to forget to do that. That's going to be later on, right? Because I don't want to ruin what I just did there. But you can start off here. If this is what you're comfortable with, then by all means, that's absolutely beautiful in my opinion. You know, of course, let's just pretend that tail's on there, right? You can start off there. 
If you're not comfortable with the mousse yet, then just go ahead and cut out two white pieces of paper or whatever color you're using, of course. And you can use a marker, just a little alcohol marker. You can use your pencils or chalks, whatever you have, and just rub the paper and give it a little bit of color there. Um, the same for the bottom portion. You just use what's, you know, available to you on hand. And if you have the product, then hey, go all out. Use all of it. <laughs> Take advantage of it. So let me show you the, the little box real quick. Oh, let me show you another Christmas bobble I made, even though that's long gone, but I never got to show it. <laughs> I didn't have time. Um, so this is the little box from the previous video. So if you've not seen that video, I do invite you to go ahead and watch it. You're going to see me assemble most of this, <laughs> but the most important part was the flower, uh, center there you know and then i did take a little bird from my stash there place that on there i meant to mention the seller of this so let me quickly plug the young lady who sells that because i forgot to do that in that video and she okay so i have a bag of these here because i've gotten I have a whole collection of them, but this is My Scrap Cabin. Yep. My Scrap Cabin Shop on Etsy. So she's the one who sells these gorgeous seam binding ribbons if you're into that. And as I said, every color, okay? <laughs> Not making that up. She's got every color. Uh, the bobbles, yes, those are gone. But Mandy, don't be too sad because, uh, you know... There's been such a high demand that I would be highly surprised if they don't bring back something similar. And, and at least on this channel, I'm going to be making videos where I'm going to try to make sure that I mention how you can stretch your dies. In fact, to, you know, kind of stress that point, right? Let me move this. If you don't, if you didn't see the video where I shared the eternal love lantern in that video i created a christmas bauble using just the top of a box right i repeated that top and created a bottom so it's the same exact pieces there and then all i did was that i used squares that were also available in that kit but if you happen to have squares um if you happen to have any box top, <laughs> this is what I'm trying to give you as a, you know, kind of a hint there or a clue as to how you can use your dies. If you have a, a shape that you can repeat, then you can definitely make ornaments that are unique uh, and different. Now this happened to have uh, this little bit on the top there, right? So that you could string the little lantern. But I thought, how fun would it be to go ahead and just add a little tassel. Now, this was from a different die set, but you don't need a die to create a tassel uh, out of paper. That's actually a quite simple little thing to make. But, um, yeah, I invite you to watch that. Now, I didn't do a tutorial on this, but I can say to you that it was two, two lids. I do show you how to make that lid in that video. And all I did was that I placed adhesive on the sides of that lid and the bottom. And then I added the little square panels all the way around. Now to create the um, join, to join these squares here, I did take a piece of paper that was one inch wide by the height of those squares. In fact, let me see here real quick. Okay, so let me show you what I mean uh this is let's see here this is about two and what measurement is that the tonic loves to do eights <laughs> let's just pretend it's two and five eighths just for the sake of argument right two and five eighths inches tall by one inch and then just fold that one inch paper in half like we did for for the little piece here and just fold it in half and then one half is going to join one side one half is going to join the other side and you just repeat that and i hope that makes sense um 
but it's not too difficult to make. It looks more complicated than what it is, you know? Um, yeah, so you can definitely use what's in your stash and just, you know, push yourself to, uh, to, to make things look a little bit different. In fact, this die set here, if you happen to have this, this little corner piece here that joins all four of those sides is the same thing. You know, this just happens to be a diamond shape here. So what's to stop you from putting another diamond shape on top here and just adhere it as if it were like a little lid. And if you hold it in this direction, then guess what? That can also be, you know, you just put the little ribbon here. That can be an ornament. And this is just a box die set, you know? Um, so it's a matter of looking at items from maybe a little bit of a different perspective but by all means um, I challenge you to do that go ahead and look through your stash and see what you have um, and oh and here was the other little bobble that um, that I didn't get to share so I just wanted to share it <laughs> more shabby this is gonna stay in this room I had fun making it added the little bell on there um, to make the bell shabby, I went ahead and painted it with gesso. Um, but there are so many of these in the group. Uh, I was taking a little bit of time this morning to look at them and, and just so inspired by uh, the creativity out there. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, come back and then I'm going to give you a really quick peek um, at what's coming next. Okay, this was uh, I was mentioning this earlier about the uh, the square dies. I went ahead and picked those up. So I am going to try to come back as soon as possible. <laughs> I don't have a date yet, but I did go ahead and pick these up. A lot of fun. The floral layering and hexagon layering. Uh, these are the lace box. Oh my gosh, I'm blown away by the detail on that. Um, and then of course. I'll be doing flowers, so just a heads up, I've got some flower dies, okay, now these are from scrapbook.com, but they also have quite a variety, quite a selection, links are in the description bar of all of my videos, so I hope that you do get an opportunity to come back, I'm gonna have some fun, and if you want to join in, then absolutely you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so that you can practice the different techniques. The one that I did here, uh, there was some inking involved. There were some mixed media, um, paste, right? I did some paste. Um, here it is. Ooh, okay. This one happened. I don't know if this was from scrapbook.com, but this was glitter snow. Maybe not. It says a leans. So maybe not. So I did use some glitter snow, but this kind of um, paste, if you will, it's, you know, you could use glimmer paste. Now this is glacier, so I'm showing you the wrong thing. Okay, let's just say you have glimmer paste, right? From Tonic Studios, you can use the same thing. It's the same, you know, you're just gonna brush it on to your flowers. Um, but yeah, I do invite you guys to join me with that series so that you post in the group I have a Facebook page, it's Paints and Glitter, or you can look me up just by my name. I am part of the Tonic Studios, um, you know, I'm a member of the official page, so you can look me up and ask me for my link. I'll give you a link to my page if you don't have it, so that way you can share what you make. I would love, love, love for that to happen, and let me know if you had fun making some flowers and that all that good stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be coming up 2024 and i look forward to many more videos i hope that you guys have been inspired that you can be blessed and i'm going to end this here <laughs> thank you so much for joining me look at so cute so fun right <laughs> but thank you i hope you guys have a very blessed and healthy new year and if you have any questions or need anything let me know you can reach out to me at paintsandglare@gmail.com or message me on Instagram. Be sure to follow me, subscribe, all that good stuff, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Have a great evening. Ciao, ciao.
Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>